Hello, I'm Lama Tomo. I wanted to share with you today um, a Tibetan practice. It's a compassion practice that's very widely practiced across all the lineages of Tibet. And I think it's especially appropriate for this moment in time. And that's why I wanted to share it with you. I wanna begin with a moment of silence and I'm gonna guide you through it a little bit. Let's all begin by just taking a breath. Settling in. And notice how you're feeling right now. On the feeling level, I know there are many layers. And one layer that I think we all share at this historic moment is um, a bit of background anxiety. There's a pandemic, um, anxiety around jobs and money, even if not for ourselves, for others around us. <clears throat> and of course, there's an historic election happening. And we have concerns for our society, our environment. And I think many of us are feeling frustration of one kind or another. So these are some background feelings that we might all be feeling at this time. And one more breath. One aspect that I wanted to zero in on with you um, is this interesting phenomenon that I think is particularly strong for Westerners. When something bad happens and we're suffering from something, we feel like we're supposed to blame somebody. It's sort of like this universal law in our minds where if something bad happens, it's time to blame somebody. Um, I remember noticing that when I was in my 20s, uh, which was a long time ago. And, um, you know, as I've studied psychology and studied meditation and uh, experienced people from other cultures, like the Tibetan culture, <clears throat> I've begun to have some ideas about why it is that we're doing that. And of course, it's happening a lot right now, because there's a lot of pretty intense stuff happening uh, that we're suffering from. Uh, and a lot of us on really both sides of the political spectrum are feeling like things are not going well. So uh, it's problematic though, when we then jump into blame pushing and pointing fingers, um, that turns out not to be so productive and it produces one thing pretty well, which is antagonism, because uh, then everybody's tossing the blame ball back and forth, and uh, it can get very intense. Um, so I think it's important to look at, well, why are we doing this? Why is it that sort of one, two? And I think it's because um, we, in our society, don't feel that we're intrinsically worthy. And so we're always kind of having to make ourselves worthy. And so if there's a problem, well, it better not be our mistake because then we're unworthy. And actually people would literally rather die than feel unworthy. Uh, there's actually been a lot of studies about that. Um, but I think we all can feel how we want to be worthy. Well, luckily, we automatically, intrinsically are. 
because we're all from this great and perfect source, all of us. So we don't have to do anything to be made of that. Uh, I like to think of it in terms of like an ocean making waves. And what are the waves made of? Ocean, water. Uh, so that's what we truly are. So we're intrinsically worthy and we don't have to prove anything. All of a sudden then, if something goes wrong, and if some of the responsibility is mine, I can take responsibility without my worthiness being at stake. So that's a very different view. And um, it's particularly different from what we Westerners have been um, programmed with. So I'm bringing all this up because of course there is a lot of suffering going on. And it looks like there's going to be a lot more in the near future. Um, and so wouldn't it be great if instead of seeing that and thinking, I better hurry up and blame somebody because I can't be to blame because then I'm unworthy. Instead, we could think, wow, compassion. So many people are going to be suffering. What can I do to help? So that's why I thought of this compassion practice. <clears throat> it's a very simple one. It uses visualization and breathing. We all know how to breathe. And actually, we all know how to visualize, um, for example, internal conversations. So we're used to imagining so-and-so and then having a whole imaginary conversation with them. I do that while I'm supposed to be meditating all the time. Well, in this meditation, you actually get to kind of do something like that officially. This practice is called Dong Lin, which means um, sending and receiving. And uh, what you're doing is you're uh, training in compassion by seeing somebody who's suffering. And the exchange with them isn't then the usual internal conversation. Rather, it's that when we see them suffering, we wanna take away that suffering and replace it with happiness. So that's the sending and receiving that we're doing. And we use visualization because we're visualizing critters. You know, we do visualize when we're having those internal conversations, it's quite natural. It doesn't have to be a perfect visualization, by the way, just the sense that you're having this exchange. So um, I will speak in imagery and that will evoke a feeling, which is the most important thing. This is really about the feelings of compassion. So compassion means suffering with, feeling with, compassion. So um, generally we'll imagine somebody in front of us and we'll take in their suffering through breath. We're gonna breathe it in. We're gonna imagine that it looks like dense, heavy clouds. So that's also a feeling, right? And we take it right into our hearts our compassionate hearts. And those compassionate hearts, every one of our hearts is a doorway to that great source, that great ocean that I was describing before, which can handle all of that suffering, no problem. So your heart is like a doorway. So we'll breathe that in and um, let it go into the entire ocean. And then as we breathe out, <clears throat> from the entire ocean, through the doorway of our heart, we're focusing with uh, our intention, like a lens, we're focusing the joy of that ocean, uh, incomprehensible, vast joy, onto the one we were um, having this exchange with, the suffering one. And so we've taken away the suffering and replaced it with complete happiness. And we're going to start at the center with us, ourselves, and our own suffering. And we Westerners particularly need to train in that because I don't think we like ourselves very well. <clears throat> and I don't think we practice a lot of compassion for ourselves. So very important to begin with ourselves so we have a basis for then stepping it out. And we'll step it out in concentric circles to larger and larger uh, groups of suffering people and all beings eventually. <clears throat> so uh, get comfortable. 
And I suggest you close your eyes because uh, it makes the visualization a little bit easier. And um, we're gonna start with this exchange with ourselves. So we're gonna kind of have to <clears throat> divide ourselves in two in a way. Um, so uh, take that small suffering version of yourself and tuck it inside of your great compassionate heart. And be clear about the shape of your particular suffering, the particular feeling of it. Is it the suffering about the, all of the concerns? Is it the suffering about the frustrations? Uh, is it about in particularly the environment or the election or our society or whatever it is for you that's really up for you? In particular, focus on that. Um, but just so that we're all kind of together in this, please pick something along those lines. <clears throat> so again, you've got your uh, small suffering self inside your heart. And you breathe in those dense, heavy clouds into your heart, your compassionate heart. And it really goes on through to the great ocean of compassion. And then on your exhale come bright, glowing, spacious clouds that soak into this suffering one in your heart. And breathe again. Taking away the suffering on the in-breath with those dense clouds. and exhaling the spacious bright clouds into that suffering one so that their face changes to a smile. And breathe again. Now imagine someone close to you who is suffering from these same kinds of themes, something along those lines. And of course, you don't want this person to suffer, you care for them. And so you want to take that away that suffering and replace it with happiness. So you see them in front of you and you breathe in their suffering, those dark dense clouds right into your heart. but it doesn't have to stick there. It goes through all the way to our common root. And also from that common root comes the vast joy in the form of those spacious bright clouds soaking into your dear one, friend, relative, whoever. And breathe for them again. And I'm sure you can think of somebody else you care for. And you don't want them to suffer from this either. And so you breathe for them in just the same way. Keeping your breaths even. So just as strongly on the in-breath, taking in the suffering and just as strongly on the out-breath, bringing them joy. Finally, here's something you can do. Let's see their face change. Now imagine everyone in your block or neighborhood who is probably suffering in some way from these concerns. And so we want to relieve them of those concerns, give them a little break from those and replace it with happiness. So we breathe in from various directions now all at once. 
and exhaling the spacious bright clouds into all of them. And again, And imagine their faces softening and turning into a smile. Now imagine that everyone across the whole United States of America and probably everyone of every political stripe is also concerned for our future. So we wanna take that away from everyone. So we breathe in those dense, dark clouds of that suffering from all directions. And exhaling the spacious glowing clouds in all directions to each and every one of them. And again, and of course, everyone in the world has really all of those same concerns. They're concerned about the pandemic, about economies, jobs, societies, the environment all of those things. And so we breathe for everyone across the world, taking in those dense, heavy clouds and from that vast ocean through the focused lens of our intention and our compassionate heart. We breathe out to all beings all over the world, the joy, the vast happiness that's in that source of us all and that runs through us all. And one more breath. And now I ask you to take a moment to reflect, how do you feel right now? Do you feel at all different from before you began this? Important to notice. Thank you for sharing your time.